I'd like to introduce Mike Adamson, who is the President and CEO of the Aircraft Electronics Association, our partners for many, many years, our 15th year of streaming. How you, how you put up with us for 15 years, I will never know. Uh, but for the moment, it's, uh, it's been a, a fun project. We got through the NPIs yesterday, 33, I 33, think. 33, yeah. A lot of great news, a lot of exciting stuff in the industry, both from the standpoint of the end user as well as internal in the industry whether it be a test stand or a measurement system or a new set of tools. This is an industry that has gotten past the pandemic and is out to help build aviation up to where it needs to be, pandemic notwithstanding. And I like what I'm hearing from the floor. There's a lot of activity. Mike, can you take the temperature of things and tell us how things are going right now for the aircraft uh, and avionics community? Absolutely. First of all, congratulations on 15-year partnership. Uh, we certainly appreciate uh, everything. And longer than my marriage. <laughs> uh, it's half the length of mine, actually. So, wow. Yeah. Okay, that's I'm impressed now. <laughs> yeah. Um, we're, yeah, we're, we're proud to work with you, and thank you for the coverage that we get. Um, the temperature, you know, look, you said it. It's post-pandemic. Um, this is, this is, I don't like new normal, but this is back to normal, um, back to what we're used to. Pre-ADSB, you know, we were in Palm Springs, it was 2019, and, you know, we had similar numbers, we had a similar vibe, energy, um, and we've got that here. We are well ahead of last year, uh, as far as our numbers go, and that's growing every day. We're just the first day into the, the actual trade show part, uh, so we're excited. And, and from what I'm hearing, uh, leading up to the show, and while I've been talking to the shops and the OEMs while I'm here, um, we are warm, not hot. Um, as there are certainly economic pressures um, and, and maybe some of the demand is softening a little bit, but the backlogs are strong. Maybe we've shaved a month off of those for, for some of the shops, um, but they're happy with the supply chain improvements. Uh, the OEMs have been working really hard um, to fix those and they should be commended for that effort. And the shops are, are, are able to um, work their magic uh, to accommodate their customers. It's not perfect. Um, but working extra hard to, to, you know, smooth out some of those kinks and uh, they're excited about that. So I think the thing you'll see this year that maybe we haven't in the last couple is that we're starting to see new product introductions that innovations um, that maybe stalled for a little bit with the fact that, you know, these OEMs had to go back and re-engineer some of the products just to, just to ship something we all were familiar with, right? And so I think that paused some of the R&D work, and now you're starting to see some of those things kind of improve a little bit. Um, so some new innovations yesterday, and some things to be excited about on the floor today. So um, maybe warm is not the right word. It's, it's still hot, I guess, um, comparatively hot to the prior years. Okay. Um, enough to be excited about for sure. Well, the only problem with all that is it cheated us of our drinking game from last year where the joke was every time somebody mentioned a supply problem, you had to take a shot. Yeah. And by the end of particular day two, uh, we would all have been flat on our you-know-what right. at that point. But I'm glad to hear that supply chain issues are easing because that has been the bottleneck throughout yeah. the last two years in particular. Yeah. And it's starting to ease. It's not over. Not but a, it's definitely, right. there's a perceptible sense of early relief that, yeah, I, I'm actually going to get something this year. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, yay for that. The industry overall didn't contract, per se, um, size-wise in regards to the pandemic. It certainly inhibited a lot of things, but they used that opportunity uh, as necessary to do what they could do with staff because retraining is such a bear. But how do you see the overall health right now? Are, is this industry in a position to go forward uh, as things hopefully continue to improve? We're certainly in a position to go forward. I think the challenge will be, it's still going to be people. We, we you know, any, any technical, in any industry, frankly, it's not just technical, but we compete with technical. Um, any industry is facing, you know, challenges with hiring people, right? And, and we definitely have that problem. We've got some solutions we're working on. We've hired um, a, new, a new workforce development focused staff, and that will start with us in, in June. We're excited about that and some of the projects we've got sort of working on behind the scenes that we'll be telling members in, in, the, in the industry about in the coming months. But um, we still have a lot of work ahead of us. And, and, and I think, you know, as, as supply chain starts to improve, 
if the shops are still talking about backlog, you have to think that that's tied to the fact that they don't have enough people. And so we still have work to do because there's still backlogs four to six months, even longer for some. And if they had more people, they could do more work. And so, um, yeah, I, I, that hasn't cooled at all. That's still an issue for us. The regulatory front, especially the FAA, that's, and of course, with recent news, yeah. nobody knows where that's going to land. Um, what is your prognosis for the short term in regards to how this industry can relate to and work with the FAA? And what do you see the, uh, as the biggest concerns for the future? Yeah, so I've always said we have a really good re working relationship with them, and we do. Uh, obviously, Rick does a wonderful job um, working with headquarters, working in the field offices. Um, we've got a, an outstanding relationship. I think if, you know, if we had to nitpick, it's going to be things that, that we hear from other industries or our partners in other associations, and that's some of the inconsistencies from, from district office to district office, um, maybe some of the lack of experience um, from the inspector workforce. But, there, but I know there are efforts to improve um, their knowledge of what we're doing. They've, we've got an outstanding um, contingency here this week. We didn't have that last year. Um, so we're starting to see you know, a, a concerted effort um, to get them more involved and familiar with what we're working on. It's not overnight. Um, I know there's still issues um, on the certification side. As you get higher up into the Part 25 world, um, there's, still, there's still some issues. Um, and you know, if you're just doing um, you know, small aircraft, minor alteration type, they're not really bothered by that. But, but what you might be bothered by is the lack of a um, uh, full-time administrator, um, reauthorization coming up, and some of those things that you may not fully understand the impact of, but you know there's a cool down effect later on. And those are concerns. I'd voice the same concerns that, that all of our partners have with, you know, we need someone in place. Um, we need GA focus um, for the FAA. And, you know, we, and, and, and that's talked about, and I, and I appreciate that, that that's being done. Uh, we need to see what that means. Especially with that now becoming a tier of reauthorization. Right, right. That, yay Sam. <laughs> right, I, I, I applaud him. And, and, and thankfully he's so close to, to the GA world that, that we can count on him um, for that push. Us. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, we're gonna need that, right? And so, but it's, it's not overnight. It's gonna take years <laughs> for that to get fixed. And, and I think um, um, we'll continue the collaborative effort, but uh, we still have a lot of work to do. And, that, and that, honestly, that tune's changed a little bit from prior years. Uh, we didn't know we didn't know, you know, when when things were kind of up in the air with where the health crisis is. But we're we're through that, and uh, we need, you know, we need to be in contact with our inspectors and them understanding the work that we're doing. So hopefully, we're headed that direction. Since he's no doubt watching this uh, live presentation right now, what advice would you give to President Biden in his uh, next nomination for FAA administrator? Hi, Joe. <laughs> Hi, Joe. Um, you know, I think I think the focus that we have to have, um, and on our, you know, we hate to see hate to see Billy um, step down because I think I think you, you yes, you would have heard from um, I think all of my peers that that would have been a great choice. Uh, um, so I think I think we missed an opportunity there. And, and, and I also I would say don't make this political. Oh. Right, and I think it was sort of headed there, and we don't need that. We need experience, um, and the GA community is okay with someone with airline experience. We know they came from the air, from yeah. the GA community to get there, so right? As he can spell aileron. Right. I mean, we, we know that. Um, so if, if they have that experience and they can they can lead people, um, I think that's you know that's keep the politics out of it. Well, the problem right now is. Washington is so politically charged that the only advice I give to anybody about anything right now is try to keep the politics out of it because the slightest hint of anything is going to set off one side or another. Exactly. And that's the life we have to live in right well, now. I, right. We're all going for sound bites, I think. Yeah. You know, and, and not and very I, good ones. Yeah, or clicks or whatever it is that they're yeah. after. And, I, and I, I struggle with that because we're getting away from the things that we need to be focusing on um, that will help this community. Um, and, and there are good people. Uh, that might be avoiding it because of that. We're, we're losing the potential for talent, or scaring them away um, by, by making it political or, or bipartisan or, or, or partisan. Well, let's, uh, let's switch from addressing Uncle Joe to the folks that really matter out there, the end users, the pilots, the shops, and so forth. Um, 
where, do, what directions do you see this industry needing to take, both from a survival as well as a growth strategy? We may have some potential issues economically coming up if they're not here already. Right. And then at the same time, aviation is one of those things that is affected but does ride out all storms. Yeah. Uh, aviation has become more and more critical, the ability to get to one place or another, even in an age of almost instant communication, audio, video, you name it, it still is never substituted for sitting out and, and starting with a handshake. So uh, business-wise, recreationally, commercially, what have you, uh, the importance to the country is phenomenal. But what do, what's the advice you would give for both tracks, survival as well as growth? Yeah, I think I think we sat here a couple of years ago and just talked about how resilient this industry is. You know, when we were shutting down businesses and we could remain open because we were essential workers, we, you know, we understood how resilient, in fact, had some pretty good years in there where people were spending their money on their airplanes and, and um, enjoying uh, a robust pipeline of products and, and outfitting their aircraft with the latest and greatest. So that was great, right? And, and we've proven our resiliency. I think going forward, we've got a new set of circumstances. If you, if you consider there still are supply chain issues, now we have interest rate hikes, we have inflationary pressures, price of fuel, discretionary spending is being challenged, um, the market's you know, up and down. Um, there's all of these factors. And I think uh, for our smaller businesses, making business easier, simply that, making business easier is, is the survival piece, right? And, and that means um, the regulatory constraints are smoothed, um, the access to products, the access to um, installation data and, and the, uh, um, the training um, and the number of people that, that, that we can recruit to this industry to help them. If we can do that and we can keep that foundation strong, everything feeds up from that, right? You're, we're, we're, the, we're the entry to aviation. We know that. We recognize that and we're proud of it. And if we can grow that um, and continue that base, um, we see the results at all levels as you go up. So I think it, one thing leads to the other in that case. Put you on the spot. All right. Never happened before, right? No. Okay. AEA's role in all this. I, I mean, we look at various associations, various segments of the industry. There are some good ones. There are quite a few not so good ones. Uh, we've always appreciated and, and frankly thought AEA was one of the best, if not the best, that we'd worked with and seen in the industry. But you have played a pivotal role in certain aspects of this industry in the past, taken some real interesting leaps, uh, the market reports and so forth that help provide guidance for the industry. What isn't AEA doing that it needs to do for the future of uh, this industry? Honestly, we talked about that um, at our board meeting before the show. Um, well, we had our spies there, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you're talking to me, I'll tell you, right? I, I'm, I'm, I, <laughs> you I will go. let you know. Um, you know, we talk about communicating what we do for this industry better. As a staff and as a board, you know we're pretty proud of the things we do, and there's quite a few for a small for a small team. And um, I don't know that that word gets out, and that that gets shared subsequently. If we're not talking about the things we're doing and the impact we have with our relationships at the FAA um, at headquarters or in the field, if we're not talking about that and, and, and letting people know the work that we're doing, um, we're not helping. And so, as an association, that's a it's going to be a focus for us. And then, of course, the, the things that everybody's talking about, the workforce side, the regulatory um, piece, the advocacy, continuing to grow you know, the marketplace um, that, that we're, we're really proud of. Um, we're the only ones in, the, in this particular space. And so we've, we've got to take ownership of that and continue to invite new people, um, new technologies, new airframes, new uh, uh, maintainers, installers, uh, and just and do our part there. So uh, we've got a lot to work on. We're not perfect. We're proud of what we've done. Um, and we're excited about the future. There's a lot of things changing. Um, these, we call them the technology experts and they prove it to us every year with what they bring out. Uh, we just have to stay ahead of that curve. I'll tell you what, like I said, uh, that's a blow in the air up your skirt. It, it, AEA has consistently proven to us to be one of the most effective organizations out there. but. To be perfectly honest, it's been the strength of key people. Um, you know, before it was Paula, then you, uh, Rick Perry. Holy smokes! I mean, there's anybody that knows the regulatory sis uh, situation in Washington better than Rick Perry than 
you know, bring them on over. I need to talk to that right. person. Uh, Brooks a, a bloody genius in that regard, and obviously being recognized this week for many years of service. And other people within your organization, there's so many of them that have stood out and in their areas have taken control. Uh, who are the future leaders in AEA? Great question. Uh, Trick question. For, <laughs> good, good one. Uh, let me comment about Rick first, um, because Please. because it was so neat to, to experience that yesterday with his recognition for the Charles Taylor Master Mechanic. I've worked with him for 20 plus years. Uh, we've worked very closely on a lot of things. One of his short term relationships. Yes, right, <laughs> right. I've known him for half of the time that it took for him to get the uh, Charles Taylor. But um, I'll just say this, um, regardless of the fact that he's an AMP or you know um, a mechanic, uh, working in an avionics world, that man has done more to represent the repair station and avionics business um, in the history of this organization, frankly. Um, he has worked so hard to, to represent our, our members and their interests, the small businesses, um, to, to recruit the next generation, to keep their model in mind when working on regulations that will benefit them. So it's been an honor and privilege. I feel very lucky to have worked with him. He's mentored me on, on a lot of his regulatory things. Right, and, and so just credit to him, and so I was really thrilled to be a part of that, and um, and I I hope we did it, you know, as best we could to honor him, and so that well, that, that was, was neat. Tremendous. Yeah, and and so when you think about the, the best future, part is we cut it all, so we just watch it over and over. That's and over. right. Yeah, and I'm sure he will. And Perry's greatest hits. Yeah, he, <laughs> he deserves the love this week um, for for all of that work, and I and whatever I can do to help shine the light on him, I will. Um, and I think when you think about the next generation. Um, you know, th those, those those are unicorns, right? He's, there's there's few like him, but yeah. but we do have um, some people. And I, Rick and I talk all the time about how we fill um, our shoes and how we continue the legacy of this association. And so, you know, not giving anything away, but we're always looking to that. You know, what what can we do to bring up somebody else um, that that can continue this legacy? And it's, we've got that's that's a tough job, right? Uh, but there are folks out there. Um, there's very very bright people. Um, that, that understand who we are, have been with us for a while, and, and can carry the torch easily. So I'm not as concerned as, as you might think. Um, I also don't want to stop this train either. We have a really, really strong team, and uh, I think we've got a few more years in us. Yep. Um, so I'm mindful of that too, um, because the talent, you've worked with most of them, and oh, yeah. you know uh, we do a lot. For a team of nine, soon to be 10, uh, we, we do quite a bit, and very proud of that. Well, that's part that's been really amazing that of what you've accomplished with comparative to so many other organizations, such a small team. Yeah. Uh, and on top of it, it's uh, one of the, especially under Paula, it was fun to see uh, a team that was so, for lack of a better word at this point, diverse, but for no other reason than they were the best people in the job. Yeah. And that was wonderful. Yeah. Uh, I talked to Paula yesterday briefly. Unfortunately, she couldn't uh, stick around to be with us today because of personal uh, appointments. But she had mentioned that coming back to this and seeing everything that has occurred uh, since she left uh, the leadership of the organization was both humbling as well as exciting, yeah. which was kind of cool. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's a, that's a pretty good stamp of approval um, from someone who did it so well for so long. Uh, yeah, it was great to see her. and and uh, have everybody you know, recognize her for, for the work she did for so many years. And so I'm, I'm just fortunate to be a part of that and, and continue it and, and, and maybe put my, my stamp on it too. Um, but you oh, know, I'm, I'm in no rush. You know? <laughs> um, we, we know where we're at with that and we've got a lot of opportunities and hopefully we're capitalizing them on them and, and uh, our members are recognizing the efforts that we've made. You know, we, first year out of the shoot, we shut down our show. Yeah. You know, heck of a start, right? Yeah. Uh, so, so we've we've climbed back from that. You're We're the boss, and oh, by the way, you're also the executioner. Yeah, so. turn it <laughs> off, right? First time ever. You you're the guy. Um, but we survived that. The, the association's strong. The board has made some really good decisions with with what we're doing with our finances, um, and, and um, we're attracting the right people to this business, um, and it's continuing to grow there. So we're we're making the right decisions. Let's talk about that aspect of it for a moment. Um, we're slowly transitioning from a point where a lot of people weren't working to, oh my gosh, I gotta work again, but what am I gonna do with the rest of my life? 
and a lot of people, either uh, midlife or what have you, starting to look at careers in industries like this and having to train and so forth. But what people don't understand is that entry level on this is not that difficult. Yeah. Um, what advice do you give to people who are looking for restarting their lives, especially in an industry this technical? You're gonna, you're gonna love this answer. Google avionics training. Okay, you can do that. You'll find us. Yeah. You'll find us. And when you do, you'll find that we have classes for you Yes. at any level where you can get started. Simple as that. Uh, we see it all the time. So we, we do some basic tra uh, training classes at our headquarters. We have career changes. We have, we have airline pilots that say, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of pulled back from that. I want to, I want to you know, maybe want to do something with their own plane. I want to understand more what this is about. Great, we can train you on on, on finishing your own airplane if you're building your own. Mm -hmm. um, interesting, how many come to us and say, you know, I've had some work done at one of these shops, and I, I see an interest in that myself, and I want to start my own. What does it take? Well, we will incubate your 145 because we have a gentleman that knows a little bit about that. Teaches a class, <laughs> a little bit, yeah. You know, and we've got, uh, you know, just we've got industry instructors that we contract with that are they're just top notch. And um, I'm glad you asked that because we see a few career changers that come in, get exposed to the association, get training, and then leave thinking, I can do this. And they're right, they can't. Now, I can't help you with the queue to get your 145 repair station. I can't, I can't expedite yeah. that for you. That queue is pretty big, and we're working on that. You will get in line with that. But uh, at the same time, you still get started. And uh, you can get you the tool you need to, to, to start the business, understand what you're doing, and you're right. Start the, the basics of it. Um, and before you know it, we've seen there's many today that started that way. Um, so yeah, start with, you can go to our website, of course, but if you Google Avionics training, you'll find us first, um, after the ads, of course, yeah. and then uh, and then go to our training and, and uh, give us a call. Excellent. To the general aviation community, the operators, the pilots, who are struggling to keep up with the technology, and depending on it, literally, life and limit time, uh, what can you tell them about the state of the industry, and something that helps them maintain their confidence in an aspect of their lives that's been sacrosanct? I mean... If you, if you can't, you know, trust your IFD, you know, 540, what can you trust? That kind of thing. Yeah, I think it's, it parallels any technology industry, right? The, the, the manufacturers of the equipment are very cognizant of that and do a really good job. Uh, and I've seen this transition, by the way. I've, I've been at this a while. Um, they do a really good job of, of making uh, training and video, you know, um, access available so that you can stay ahead of that. So I think if you have a, an appetite for staying ahead of the power curve, you're fine. Um, I think if you climb into some of these cockpits, um, you know, the displays are maybe more simple, uh, but their capabilities are tenfold what they used to be. That can be daunting, but the tools are there. Um, I think I can speak for, for all the manufacturers on the floor that there's, you know, a concerted effort to, to create that kind of training and make it available for free, or, or they can approach them at, you know, any one of the big shows that the public's typically at talk to their sales representatives and understand the equipment. So the resources are there if you're interested. Um, and I think that's just continuing to grow. So applause to the, uh, to the manufacturers for that. And if, we're, and if we're falling short and it's in a gap that the association can fill, we'll jump on it. When you started this gig, uh, think back if you look for a moment to working that from that standpoint till now. What surprises have come, come your way? Jim. That's a trick tr question. You realize that? <laughs> yeah, because it's been a while, right? You know, my, in my my early days were naval aviation, um, and and then obviously I was with an OEM before transitioning to the trade association. So I got to see really the introduction of the color moving map. That's that's kind of my my you know floor there. Um, to think where it's today, the miniaturization of technology. Um, the, the proliferation of that color screen across the cockpit, and then, and then the price points you can purchase that at, um, the connectivity that you can enable it at, it's mind blowing. It's hard to imagine where it will, will go. There's obvious things, there's, there's AI, there's voice, there's, there's things that you just see in consumer electronics, you know we're gonna parallel. Um, and it's just hard to imagine how you can improve on what we've already got and you know what's happening. Um, yeah, I think, I think if you went back to even my first you know, training class where I was doing a I was doing a KX-155 and a KLN-89B to a CDI, working on this. 
and you know, behind the scenes, the wiring, there's still a lot of that's the same. There's yeah. a lot of things, but but the data connectivity, the Wi-Fi connect, all that that's that's been added to it is is um, enabling all kinds of really neat things. And it's um, as a as a uh, technophile myself, um, it's just fun to watch that. Well, you have to be a nut job. You have to. Yeah, you have sure. to. I know you've got a hard break coming up and business to conduct on behalf of the association and the industry. But uh, last words, what do you want to tell this industry in 2023 after a pandemic, uh, going into a, an interesting future, uh, getting past supply chain issues, transitions in FAA, so forth and so on. How are we doing, boss? We're doing great. We're doing great. And, and um, I want to say thank you to the folks that that come to this show every year. Um, a lot of them. Look at this. It's, it's, it's busy fantastic. out there. We're, and we're well ahead of last year's numbers. I mean, when I say we're doing great, we are. Um, and I, I just, I just want to say thank you to them, to the customers that, that you know keep these businesses going, um, to the folks that confide in these shops um, with their lives on their aircraft. You've come to the right place. If these people are involved, if, you're, if your repair station, your avionics shop is involved with the association, you can trust um, that they're working hard on their own professional development, um, their own understanding of the regulations, their appreciation for safety, you're in good hands. And so to those folks that um, you know, are, are, are working with those shops, thank you. Um, and thank you to the folks that come here and support us and then of course the manufacturers that make this all go as well. Um, we're in great shape. Thank you, George. Uh, all you have to do is look at the floor, hear the tenor of the conversations, uh, and so forth to know that this is an exciting industry, a healthy industry, a strong industry, and there are some people out here set to do some business. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, for the rest of aviation that turns on what happens in avionics, all they can do is just simply go, yeah, escape that bullet. So there we yeah. go. Alrighty, folks, we're in for a break here for a few moments. I can't thank uh, Mike enough for spending some time with us. Aero News Network's coverage of the 66th Annual AEA International Convention and Trade Show, live from Orlando, Florida, is brought to you in part by the following sponsors.